Uh, greetings, Tony. Thanks for all your help and wisdom. You're an amazing teacher. Your videos have helped me so much, uh, as well as your manual. Thanks. I have a question. I'm a newbie here. This is my fourth paint job. I have a 2015 Dodge Challenger Sublime Paint Factory PFB paint code. I'm replacing the quarter panel. So you guys can take a look at that in a second, uh, which will require painting the quarter panel um, as the replacement is a different color, of course. Um, I'm using the clear as a foundation. Yes, so you can paint on top of uh, painted clear coat. It's a good foundation. Uh, my paint will be the Chroma Max system. Um, I'm also at doing a door repair, which will require body filler. So if we take a look at the door here, you can see that the door was also hit right by the, uh, the door jam here. Um, I'm going to go back to reading. Uh, I'm wondering if I can blend part of the door and get away with it, or do I have to paint the whole door? Also, do I have to blend the rear bumper or paint the whole bumper? Um, another said to paint the quarter panel, blend the cut areas and blend the door halfway past the repair area only. I would appreciate the advice. My first instinct would be to blend the door and blend the bumper. Yes. Yeah, so absolutely. If you're doing a, a complete quarter panel skin replacement here, it looks like it just missed the, the bumper cover. The bumper cover could definitely be salvaged. Um, so I would definitely blend into, I don't know if you guys can see my mouse. Can you guys see my mouse? Hopefully, but uh, the lower uh, part of the bumper cover where that marker light is, I would be blending all in there, right? That whole side, the whole back uh, and just blending the new base coat with the green base coat here on the quarter panel. And I would also do the blend cutting at the top of the roof area. So uh, that's where I would kind of do the blend. Okay, you could go lower. Um, I think this is gonna be a pretty easy color to shoot uh, as long as whoever's mixing your paint does a good job with the color match. So I would definitely take, you know, you could take a piece of this. Once you cut this quarter panel out, you I would just cut a piece of it and give them that piece to match the paint. Um, right here, the door, I would definitely, what is this? What am I looking at here? I'm looking at a black car here. This is something else. Okay, so yeah, I would definitely blend about half the door. Like your, your body work is literally gonna be like 20% of the door here, okay? So I would definitely base this area where the handle is, take out that handle, do the body work, make sure it's good. Um, and then I would blend the base coat probably all the way toward the middle or a little bit more under the mirror, you know, toward the middle of the door, blend it really good. And then just clear the whole door, clear the quarter panel, right? Cause that's going to be all fresh paint. And then, I'm sorry about that. And then blend the bottom of this bumper cover, the side of the bumper cover, and don't really touch the back too much. Just pretty much the side, blend the side. Um, so yeah, hopefully this helps. Hopefully you're watching this. Ooh, the real trash panda. Aloha, Tony. I just finished wet sanding a Harley luggage case made of plastic with 400 grit. I have a few halo ring spots that I sanded through plastic. Can I spray pearl base over it? I would actually, I would prime it. Uh, because sometimes if you're spraying, you know, directly over certain plastics like that uh, without sealing it with something you could end up with a little bit of you know biting uh or wrinkling in that area if you lay on your base coat too thick so if you're if you're gonna say screw it you're not you don't want to lay a uh, a sealer a 1k sealer or uh, a coat of 2k primer on it first as a base um then I would literally dust it with your pearl base coat. You could do it, right? I would just dust it and just cover it little by little. And then once it's covered, then I would put two heavy coats of base on it. All right. So you could go that way as well. Just be careful. Don't load the paint on too much with new plastic like that, or, or with like a halo sanded out plastic, because you could have chemical reactions. 
uh, or a paint reaction. Um, and I think we did on one of my VIP moped projects and I showed you how to take care of it. So yeah, it's in VIP as well. If you do end up having an issue, um, what type of buffer do you recommend to cut and buff, uh, any variable speed orbital buffer. Okay. Uh, so it doesn't have to be a vibrating, uh, dual action type of buffer. It could just be a, a rotary, you know, a rotary style as well. So. Um, I have an, an old Hitachi. I have an old Snap-on that I use for many years. And I also have a battery-powered Milwaukee buffer. I got three of them. Um, so, yeah. So, that's what I would I would recommend. And, Tom, if you subscribe to the Learn Auto Body and Paint newsletter here. Oh, that's Ecom Domination. Hold on. Let me get you the link to Learn Auto Body and Paint. Uh, we cover all that type of stuff as well. Um, if you search the blog. Uh, and you go into the tools section, safety and tools and all that. We cover all that. So check it out. Um, any good deals on spray guns that you know of? Well, I know Zula is doing a sale right now for Labor Day. You might want to check them out. Uh, other than that, I'm not sure. Maybe just Google it or whatever. But Zula is doing a special sale. I think you get 60% off a mini gun if you buy a large gun or 30 bucks off uh, all large guns. So you might want to check that link I just sent you. And I'm going to respray my ute. Uh, if like to know more about the preparation and the start, like sanding with old paint on it. So Lee, definitely hit up learnautobodyandpaint.com. That's the Zulo link. I'm going to get the links down below. So just like if you're watching the replay of this, just click in the description of this video. There's going to be all the links to everything I'm talking about down there. Um, or also like you'll see like cards pop out on the top right of the video. Um, what is the, the new paint I'm, type that I'm seeing on new cars? It's like a real nice glossy look, VIP. Well, it's got to be base coat, clear coat. Like all the cars now are base coat, clear coat. Um, I'm buying a new Bronco with the molded in color hard top okay that looks good i plan to paint it white what primer should i use epoxy uh no i would just use a 2k filler primer sand sand the uh the entire top down with 400 grit and actually you don't even have to uh prime you could if that bronco is coming with a painted hard top and you're just going to change the color no primer needed just scuff your clear coat with 400 grit and shoot away. You can put any color base on it. It'll be fine. Um, can I spray a primer surfacer with my Atom X27 1.4 tip, or should I purchase a larger tip? Seems I'm getting low volume of epoxy primer with 1.4. So if you're going to be spraying any type of primers, 2K filler primers, epoxy primers, out of a 1.3 or 1.4 standard painting tip size, I would definitely, and I teach you how to do this in VIP, you're going to need to reduce your primer 10 to 15%. Okay. Because primers are naturally thicker than base coats uh, or single stage. Okay. A little bit thicker than single stage. So you're going to want to thin it down if you're shooting out of a smaller nozzle. Uh, however, you could upgrade and get yourself a 1.8 or 2.0 tip uh, conversion tip for that gun. Uh, which will allow you to shoot it straight. It'll shoot on thicker, cover more scratches quicker. Um, so it's up to you. So if you're going to be reducing it, you're going to reduce it, but you're going to spray more coats. If you're going to be using a larger tip size, you're going to cover quicker, less coats, and just pretty much just getting it done faster, right? So hopefully that helps. Yep, 10% more reducer and... Gail, I'm not sure if you're a VIP, but I show you how to mix primers by eyeballing it and by looking at consistency, because that's more important than putting in 10% and then just going with that. Because sometimes you're going to need more than 10%, you know, and sometimes if you put too much, you're going to see it rolling off of your, your paint stick and you're, it's, you're going to, it's going to be too translucent. That means you, you reduced it too much. So it's good to know how to mix paint 
by consistency and by looking at it. That's mainly how I do it. The only reason why I use um, like a measuring cup for doing base or, you know, things like that is when I'm showing you guys on video, like, hey, okay, this is one to one, you know. But um, when it comes to reducers um, and even activators, sometimes you could just add a little bit more if you want, you know, if you want everything to kind of harden up a little quicker. Um, wait time before you put 2K filler primer over epoxy. Uh, normally epoxy cures and dries uh, after you mix it with activator, after it's sprayed on about an hour, 60 minutes. So I would say anywhere from 60 minutes to 90 minutes after, just make sure it's dry. As long as it's cured and dry, you're good to go. And you can also spray over it then up to the next day. I wouldn't wait any more than that. If you're going to wait three, four, five days a week, you're going to want to kind of scuff it super quickly with like, uh, you know, 280 grit, 320 grit, just to give it a little scuff and then put some 2K filler primer on it. Um, but if you're doing it within 24 hours, you don't have to sand it. Just make sure it's clean. You know, maybe just tack it down or something. Not that dust is going to matter at that point because you're, you're still in the filling and blocking stage, right? But yeah, make sure it's clean. So hopefully that helps. Here's our last question. Tony Anderson says, hey, I want to give you an update on my Ford F-150 paint project. I realized why my paint job didn't turn out as planned. I ordered slow activator instead of slow reducer. Not good. Uh, well, actually, slow activator is recommended when you're doing a complete paint job. So because it gives it more time to flow out. So that's not a bad thing. Um, yeah, so I, I'm not, I don't think you did anything wrong there, buddy. Using slow activator on a complete paint job um, and even medium or a slow reducer is not gonna give you an issue. Um, it can give you an issue if you don't have proper flash times and you're just loading the paint on too much. First time, we just downloaded the free manual. Uh, could I use this Valspar paint plus primer rattle can I have sitting around for my motorcycle fuel project, fuel tank project? It's stripped to bare metal. Uh, it says on the can it could be used on metal. I'm guessing you can. I'm not sure if that's a one part. Uh, is it a 1K or a 2K product? I'm not sure. All I know is that 1K, any 1K product, you know, a, a product that dries with the solvents evaporating versus adding a hardener, which makes it cure, okay, which acti activates uh, the chemicals and makes it cure and dry hard, will you will have an issue with the fuel. The, the gas will melt it. So... You know, that's why you want to make sure you have a, um, a two part, a 2K clear coat on, on anything with gas because it's, it protects it. And you don't want to leave gas on any type of paint. You know, make sure you wipe it off. Of course, it, it will damage paint. So I'm not sure about, about the 1K product, man. You might not want to, unless you're spraying a 1K and then you're putting a 2K uh, base coat, clear coat system on top of it. Um, before you start messing around with the, with the gas, with the fuel. Uh, why did he use an activator on a solvent base coat? I'm not sure. I thought he was talking about clear coat. I thought he was thinking of activator on clear coat uh, and reducer in base coat. So reducers are used for base coats uh, to, to, you know, to make your one-to-one -one ratio. You can also use the same reducer in clear coat. Uh, sometimes you could put 10, 10% reducer. It's the same exact reducer that you use in your base coat to put in your clear coat. Sometimes you don't need reducer in your clear coat, whatever, you know, the mixing rate, whatever it says on the can, you should go by, but most clear coats don't need uh, a touch of reducer. Some of them you can, if it feels like it's a little thick and you want to thin it out a little bit. So uh, I ended up resetting the entire truck of, with 600 grit and rebasing it. Turned out much better with the slow reducer with the base coat. 
Yeah, so with base coats, no matter what, I like to use a medium reducer because I want it to, I don't want my base coats to malt. And especially with uh, with metallics, I want my base coats to dry uh, pretty quickly. Uh, I, I'll never use a fast. I always use medium reducers for base coats. It's just my thing. Um, but with clear coats, if I'm doing a complete full paint job, I like to use slow activators, slow hardeners. Um, if I'm doing touch-ups, smaller projects, motorcycle, I'll go with a medium. You know, it doesn't, you know, whatever. Medium, I fast only if you're doing a fender and you're painting it in the morning and the customer's going to pick it up that night, then I would go with a fast uh, clear coat just to get it dried quick, um, which could even give you time to cut and buff that same day. The week, Tony here, hanging out with you from Paradise Garage and LearnAutoBodyAndPaint.com. Keep me posted, guys. Send me. Feel free to send me videos, um, images, text at Tony at LearnAutoBodyAndPaint.com in case you have any questions or you know are, are hung up on something or just tune in live with me every week like this once a week, um, where uh, where we could help you out with your Q and A. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great week. Peace, aloha, and keep smiling. Peace.